Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are going to discuss the long saga of Boeing 737 MAX aircraft which remains grounded and under various clouds. One of the issues that have come up is an ex-employee of Boeing has taken what is called the Fifth Amendment in the United States which means he will not submit documents or give testimony of a kind that can actually cause problems to him in terms of criminal prosecution. That means it seems to imply that there could be criminality in his past conduct. The second issue, the House Congress Committee has asked for essentially access to Boeing employees on this issue on which Boeing has expressed disappointment that in spite of their cooperation, this kind of notices are being made public. So it appears that the issue is things being made public rather than the content of it. The third issue, and this is a much more serious concern for Boeing, the European Aviation Safety Agency seems to be arguing there's still very serious problems with, with the Boeing Mac 737 MAX aircraft and they do not see it getting resolved without a thorough check by them. So these are the clouds under which the Boeing is currently. To talk about this, we have Dee Raghunandan, who knows the aviation area, has been an aeronautical engineer. Look, if we look at all of this, uh, first issue is the Boeing is not going to return to service very quickly. Boeing 737 MAX is not going to return to service very quickly. It looks as if the way things are going now, uh, and I'm sure we'll discuss this further. Uh, the problem uh, is that other major aviation markets, particularly in Europe and China, are unhappy with the role of the Federal Aviation Administration in the US. So even when the FAA certifies the Boeing 737 MAX uh, for having undertaken design modifications, etc., and they deem it to be airworthy once more, other agencies are not prepared to take the FAA's word uh, at face value. And regulatory agencies in other major markets are saying, we will do such assessment on our own and then we will clear the aircraft. Independent assessment. That's right. Which means then that even if the FAA clears the 737 MAX, it looks as if initially at least it will fly only in the United States and in a few other countries whom the US can arm twist into following its lead rather than taking independent action. Now, you know, the, this is of course uh, something which could be obviated if FAA and EASA, for instance, had put a joint team to evaluate and examine the, uh, shall we say, the revisions being made. But also looking at the EASA's uh, PowerPoint presentation, which seems to be out, which was presented to the European Parliament, they have put out a number of technical question marks. Right over the aircraft and a lot of them has already been discussed among us. Absolutely. We had also talked about how essentially the MCAS remaining a secret from the uh, pilot was such a huge mistake because he didn't know what the hell was fighting him. The questions about computers, single sensor, computers overriding the pilot, but more importantly, the airframe itself, the fact that you had this retrofitted large engines on an airframe which was not designed to take it, and therefore the, the characteristic of the flight of the aircraft having changed. All of this are really some things which do not seem uh, heading for an easy resolution. Absolutely not. And uh, that's the reason why in the EASA uh, presentation, uh, they have highlighted major technical flaws, uh, not only in the MCAS and its allied uh, systems, which resulted in the runaway stabilizer uh, condition, of which the two caused air, this, two uh, accidents. Uh, two accidents of the Lion Air from Indonesia and the uh, Ethiopian uh, airline. Uh, they have highlighted these issues specifically and said we would like to a fully understand 
the causes of these two crashes mm -hmm. uh, and until these crashes are fully understood we would not feel comfortable in allowing the 737 max to take to the air again mm -hmm. second uh, to carry out the various design modifications precisely for the kinds of problems that you uh, discussed which we have discussed many times on this uh, program stick. which are known uh, problems the design uh, problems uh, which have been reiterated by the European uh, agency and they've also said that apart from reviewing these we would also like to undertake a more general review of the design of the 737 max which would then bring in issues that you talked about with regard to the airframe the mounting of the engine the position of the engine uh, all of that and so on uh, and once again i'd like to reiterate that these uh, problems which the european agency uh, has highlighted are due to a great deal of discomfort in the fact that the federal aviation administration in the us had not conducted these necessary investigations on its own but had delegated these powers back to the manufacturer to Boeing uh, to certify, which is, to put it mildly, extremely odd that the manufacturer would be asked to certify his own designs. Yeah, this is basically the self-certification issue. That's right. And uh, that the FAA claims they did not do, but in practice, that's what they have done. Absolutely. And it's clear from all the record now publicly available. And if you ask me, the issue that you highlighted in your introduction of the Boeing employee not wanting to release is probably linked with this. This uh, issue that what he said internally what he said and what internally he said externally. And what he said externally, uh, he may have indicated his awareness of this conflict and how he was trying to mask certain uh, defects that he had come across, etc. You know, the Yasa documents also indicate what are called significant technical issues. Right. We have discussed how, uh, some of them already. But the more important issue for me is that they do not seem something you can resolve in a month or two. So assuming that takes another six to eight months and assuming they can be overcome, sometimes technological problems are of a nature that actually if you correct in one sense, some other flaw yeah. creeps up. And this could be in that range. But if it doesn't, then, and the flaws are, can be rectified, it does appear it will take time because I don't see Absolutely. it being done very quickly. And they still haven't started the examination of the resolution of the problems. That's in right. fact, when FAA did certain ex uh, examinations, it threw up more problems. So, in fact, new uh, problems cropped up on the question of the load of the flight control computer, overloading it and so on. But leaving all of it that out, what does it mean for the aviation market? Because this market really had two big players. The Russians and the Chinese have yet to come into this market. They have aircrafts which are on the, shall we say, on the anvil or ready to roll, but they really are not challenges anymore. So this, this whole segment of, uh, shall we say, the medium level uh, jets, the passenger jets which are taking a large part of the traffic today, the only other player is Airbus and it doesn't seem they'll be able to cater to the to total demand. So this is how do you see the aircraft industry moving in on this and what's likely to happen? Yeah, there's two aspects to this. Uh, one, as you said, is capacity in you the should. airline uh, industry and how the failure of the 737 MAX uh, link with this. Uh, there is certainly going to be a capacity uh, problem. Crunch. The longer the uh, MAX stay grounded, uh, the more uh, problems it's going to create. However, there is a window of opportunity here for Pratt & Whitney. Mm -hmm. uh, Pratt & Whitney has got this engine uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there are other engines which Pratt & Whitney uh, has which it may go back to uh, in doing this. And there is the LEAP engine which is a collaboration between General Electric and Safran of France. 
I think this opens up an opportunity for them more to replace the Pratt & Whitney series of engines in further uh, designs of the 737 uh, Neo uh, range and the Max uh, range. If that is done, and these modifications, at least on the Airbus as well as on the 737s, have not met the same kind of problems as the ones with the Pratt & Whitney uh, engines. So that's one possible Raghu, quote still, unquote solution yeah, on the horizon. That's 12 months, 18 months that's for right. this to happen. That's so right. it doesn't so solve the short term problem. That's right. It doesn't case. solve the short term problem in any case. And the second problem which is going to come is with these conflicts between FAA and the European uh, Aviation Agency and other Chinese, agencies, uh, agencies, these two in the main, uh, even the Indian agency for that matters. Yeah, but the last time this happened, the Indian agency DGCA was inclined to go along with the FAA on this and may not resist the FAA as much as the Chinese or the Europeans uh, would. Uh, the, the problem here is it's also going to affect the insurance companies. The insurance companies are not going to be happy at all. Uh, well, more than the insurance companies, Raghu, if other agencies do not certify the aircraft, I do not see Americans happily getting into a, Ma a 737 MAX either. That's precisely okay. my point. People so might vote with their feet. That's right. That's and not the vote. other issue. And the same with the insurance companies. If yeah. the Europeans are not certifying it, the Chinese are not certifying it, the insurance companies also will put up their prices. Yeah, let's will... assume the insurance companies are also uh, arm twisted to certify, but there's very little way of arm twisting the passengers, you know. Mm. And in fact, as we know, the immediately this accident happened, the the a lot of the sites which deal with aircraft, That's right. air, uh, air reservations, they also started telling you That's what right. was the aircraft being used on That's that right. particular leg. That's right. So that was an indication that passengers could choose yeah. whether they consider it safe or so not. So this is the other aspect of the capacity uh, constraint. One is the physical capacity constraint. The other is resistance by various stakeholders. Various stakeholders, the passengers yeah, included. The passengers especially. In, in fact, I've seen uh, uh, comments that, you know, I'd prefer to drive rather than fly yes. in this aircraft. Sure. So, at the US, sure. a 12-hour drive may be preferable Absolutely. to booking your flight on an air, a Boeing 737 MAX. Uh, last question. You know, this is something, if it, for instance, for 12 to 18 months, Boy, this Max 737 or 77 Max doesn't return to the air. Do you think there's a real chance of Boeing tanking? Uh, is it too big to fail yeah. or is it too big to fly at the moment? Uh, it is too big to fail. Uh, firstly, uh, its stocks will certainly go down uh, badly, but it will be kept afloat to some extent at least by the military side of the business. Uh, even though there are some problems there even also. Even though there but, are problems yeah. there also. But uh, that's one part that would keep it uh, uh, going for a while until they are able to override this, at least in the US market. If they are able to do sufficient arm twisting to be able to continue to fly in the US, that would give them some cushion, uh, cushion to fall back on, although it would affect them a lot because close to 50% or more of their market is from planes which are sold to outside the US. And it also is an opportunity not only for Airbus, but also for the Chinese and the Russian aircrafts, which are also trying to fill this gap now, yeah. and which are about to take off in the market. That's They're right. supposed to be debuting in this period. That's right. So that's also the other opportunity. Right. Unfortunately, the Brazilians have taken themselves out because Embraer has been sold to uh, essentially Boeing. That's right. That is the unfortunate part of all this. In fact, I was just going to say, apart from the Chinese and the Russians, Embraer was uh, one whose models could have been stretched to meet the uh, 737 MAX or Neo uh, sizes, but then that's uh, gone up the spout. <laughs> yeah, one of Bolsonaro effect in Brazil <laughs> as a, as a right. Thank you, Raghu, for being with us and explaining the larger issues regarding Boeing 737 MAX and also the aircraft industry, the aerospace industry today. This is all the time we have in NewsClick today. Do keep watching NewsClick and do visit our website.